my earliest memory is the day I enrolled. Um, and the day after, there was an, an, an initiation a ceremony which consisted of um, second year boys chasing first year boys and bringing them up to a tap and flooding their head. And I remember that I was concerned that my new suit would be damaged by the water. Then um, the other memories are fairly mundane. Um, I do remember being boxed over the ears by a certain teacher for misbehaviour. That taught me a lesson which I've I remembered all my life. Um, of course, I have memories of of classes. Um, at the end of first year, we were allowed to um, give up history and study either modern German or classical Greek. And I decided that I would give up history, which I wasn't very keen on, and study Greek. And our Greek class had seven boys um, and we used to meet in a room under the stage of the Great Hall. Our subject master was a man called Huey Braden, a very dour man, and his nickname was the Morgue. Um, just a reminder that one of the Greek students um, was Sir James Plimsoll, uh, who was a very um, famous man in the service of the Australian nation. In fourth and fifth year, we recognised talented boys um, amongst the prefects um, it was the ducks of the school a man called Arthur Horner and um, and um, another man Sir James Plimsoll I mentioned and um, a, s a scientist who later became extremely talented and famous in England, who was John Cornforth. We, we recognised that these boys had superior intellect. Um, and um, would make their way in, in the world. Well, then there was the ordinary um, science and physics and so forth, um, maths one and maths two, swatting for the intermediate certificate, and then the change into fourth and fifth year, which was quite a leap. I was not a good student. Um, 
in many respects. Um, my attention was disrupted by the advent of wireless. I was given for a Christmas present by two of my brothers a hobby book for boys. And uh, in that book, there were instructions on how to build what was called a crystal set, uh, which had earphones attached to it. And um, I saved up money to buy parts, and eventually I managed to build myself a crystal set with the help of the local radio dealer. And um, then I had developed into a one valve set. And instead of doing my homework, I would spend time messing around with my wireless hobby. Um, the result of which I failed in Latin and I failed in French in the leaving certificate. And in those days, um, if you didn't have Latin, you didn't matriculate and go to university. I think I, en I enjoyed um, the physics and chemistry. Um, we had a very personable um, teacher in our fifth year, I think it would have been, a man called Lenny Basser, who was um, um, the master in charge of athletics as well. Um, he was a pleasant person and uh, we enjoyed um, his periods. Would you like to talk a little bit about uh, what you did after school? Yes, after school I um, applied my hobby to employment and I took a job in a radio factory at 15 shillings a week, which included Saturday morning. And later on, I had my wage increased to a pound a week. Um, but we must remember that 1934 was when I joined the workforce. We were still in a depression mm. and not everyone could afford to buy a wireless set and this factory closed down. Um, I later on started to study at a um, private school called the Marconi School of Wireless um, and I studied there um, for some time and gained what was called a ship's operator's certificate of proficiency which entitled me to go to sea on a ship and be in charge of the radio room. I went to sea for 12 days only um, and I was dreadfully seasick. Um, I relieved the radio operator for a, a round trip for him to be with his family uh, during January 
and um, it was a trawler, a, a trawling for fish up and down the, um, the coast of New South Wales. And I was very sick the first day out of sea. Um, but as it, I had no intention of being a wireless operator at sea, uh, the gaining of this certificate was part of the overall course at this um, Marconi School um, to study various aspects of radio reception and radio transmission. After that, um, there was the outbreak of war um, in September 1939. And um, my wireless training uh, was very helpful because I joined the militia um, and the militia I was, went into a signals unit and um, after um, about 18 months I was uh, sent to an officer's training school and um, my radio knowledge was of great advantage to me. Um, after the war, uh, I was discharged in 1948 and um, I had a difficult time uh, for several years before I found a position that suited me from about 1954 uh, onwards, I had salaried positions until I retired in um, 1982, I think. After I retired, I bought a hobby farm um, with my wife up in the Hawkesbury Valley uh, but eventually the time came when we were growing older and um, well, eventually we moved into town and sold the hobby farm and then later we moved into the retirement village. There was an appeal for a road and cutler drive um, which later became um, the memorial entrance on Anzac Parade and I sent a cheque along and as a result of that I received an invitation to attend the opening of those gates uh, by the Governor General. What was um, Roden Cutler like as a, as a, as a fellow student? Well, you see, he was a year behind me and we would simply um, meet on Wednesday afternoon sport, either on the tram out to um, the rifle range at what was called then Long Bay. Um, but see, he was a tall boy. He had a, a presence. Had uh, and over the last sort of eight or nine years, you've been involved with the rifle club, and I met an old boy from Canberra. He told me about activities of the club, and by that time, I was uh, living on the Northern Line, and I was still driving a car. Uh, and um, he suggested that I go out to the GPS shoot at Mount Wilga at the rifle uh, range and um, it was a result of that proximity my association has become so close. Uh, for, for example if I had still been living in the Hawkesbury Valley I may not have come to the opening of the gates and this sequence 
that followed uh, would never have entered my life. Yes, well, um, um, when um, just before the school goes on holidays, oh, yeah. uh, we had these, we have these luncheons. And um, I had made a donation to the club and the club in its wisdom uh, decided to endow a, a trophy with it. And um, so I used to present the trophy um, to the um, highest high school boy at the GPS. I would make a little speech uh, before presenting the trophy, uh, the miniature trophy, uh, to the um, to the winner. <laughs>